my dear Hevra. It's good to be out there again. We're coming to the end of another week. And as we do so, right, time to talk a little more. Derech Eretz. So starting with this week, and I'll probably go on for a couple weeks moving forward, we're going to be speaking about Derech Eretz in regards to speech. And the reason why I'm saying for a couple weeks moving forward is because there's a lot to speak about when you're speaking about speaking. Um, and I have a lot of experience about this. I, I do done quite a bit of uh, public speaking during the course of my life, so there's a lot to talk about. Uh, but for today, we're going to speak about lying. And what I'm saying, lying, lying is a very large term. It's a very big word and it covers a lot of different little classifications. Um, and the reason why we're going to speak about lying is because, well, there's halacha saying we don't lie. We, we speak the truth. Right? When we're dealing with business, we're supposed to be yashar in our business. Since being yashar in our business, it's not just a matter of, oh, don't rip off this one person because they come from here versus there. It's saying also, no, we're supposed to be open and honest. You know, if you, have a, uh, if you have a crop which grew at this point in time, then you say that. And you don't say, oh, it's a different year or whatever. Um, right? But on the other side of things, right? so we're, we're not allowed to tell a lie except for when we are. And then the question arises, well, when and why would we be allowed to lie? So we see a story right after Yaakov Avinu passes on that Yosef's brothers, even though Yosef had forgiven his brothers and he told them that he'd forgiven them when he revealed himself to them and said, oh, don't worry about it, they were still fearful that maybe he held some sort of a grudge. And so their defense and their protection of themselves against this potential grudge is that they told him a lie. They told him a mistruth, um, you know, saying, oh, well, our father said, right, uh, you know, he left us these instructions, and, you know, basically they were, they were in one regard, it was kind of, uh, well, it was misleading, right? So the post can say, because of this Pasuk, right, right, it is permitted to tell an untruth or to change the facts for the sake of peace. Right? The other term, in, uh, in English, we call this a white lie, right? Um, a lie which doesn't have any direct fallout, any negative uh, impact. And, you know, so, by the way, before we go further into this, I just want to say that um, I highly recommend looking up the halachas of speaking and honesty especially. There's, um, there's a wealth of information uh, if you don't know where to look within this farm. Internet's amazing, right? Rabbi Google, thank you. Um, and so, you know, moving on from there, you know, there was an interesting chuba which I also came across earlier on today, which says that if um, if a collector comes to the door and they ask to speak with the father of the house, right, who's trying to collect some money, then the the father is allowed to instruct their child, right? So now we're dealing with chinuch even, to say he's not home. I don't know when he'll be home. Whatever it may be, and the reason why is because along the same lines, right, for the sake of peace, a person is allowed to bend the truth and even have someone else bend the truth on their behalf, right? In this situation, the peace being kept is that, uh, well, it's none of the business of a stranger as to where the father is, what their schedule is, who is home, or anything else, right? They should just be left alone. It might even be in that situation the family doesn't have money to give, in which case they're also maintaining their own dignity in a certain regards. And so there's, it's, it's a gray area, very gray. Look it up further, but it's still something which exists within halacha. And there's even another, uh, another uh, argument as well, right, which says, you know, going to Shalom Bayez for a chasen and a kala, right, which says, uh, you know, don't take this one out of the context, but, you know, if a, uh, if a bride is not so pretty, you're actually allowed to tell the chassan, oh, she's a beautiful, she's gorgeous, for the purpose of reassuring him within his choices, for making sure that this takes place, and also for establishing shalom bias within the house for a long term. Our words are helping somebody else to establish shalom. We also have an internal shalom, which maybe we have to be a little bit more honest on. And that shalom is, am I lying to myself? Not something. We see by David Melech within his stories, right? There's a couple times, you know, when he did something not so yashar. He didn't lie to himself saying, oh, what I did is fine. He didn't build himself up. I'm the king, so what I'm doing is absolutely fine. He was honest with himself. 
he was honest with those around him. He said, no, no, no. I messed up. I dropped the ball. I got to do tshuva on this action. And from there, right, we, we see that he, he was successful. So honesty and, and bending the honesty, right? There's, it's always a gray area. We have to learn how to be able to tiptoe this area within our lives. And we have to understand that halacha really does give us a path, right? Halacha, lelechet, right? Holech. It tells us where to go and how to go within those steps. So I highly recommend, as I said, learning more into this. It's a fascinating topic, and we'll speak more on it next week, hopefully. Be well. Have a good Shabbos.